Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about dominant strategy mechanism design. You may wonder why we uh, bring mechanism design and dominant strategy together. Here is why. Uh, before I go on the board, uh, let me say one very important uh, statement. A mechanism actually induces game, uh, given the individuals, the participants of the uh, institution, given the individual's preferences, a mechanism is going to induce a game. And so this game, uh, we need to make a prediction about what its outcome is. So remember in game theory, we use uh, equilibrium concepts as our prediction method. And, and the very basic equilibrium concept was dominant strategy equilibrium. And we argued that it's a very strong, very nice, it has very nice properties, but it's a very strong equilibrium concept. And so we talked about Nash equilibrium, Bayesian Nash equilibrium, and so on and so forth. So we need an equilibrium concept uh, because once again, each mechanism, given the participants, the individual's preferences, is going to induce a game. And so we need a solution concept to uh, estimate to to guess what the or predict what the outcome of that game will be. All right. So um, for that reason, we have a dominant strategy, our first equilibrium concept. Uh, so let me first define. Uh, we already know this uh, concept, dominant strategy. Uh, it basically means whatever your opponents do, playing a strategy a dominant strategy is going to give you the highest possible payoff you can achieve, all right, given all the other strategies you have. So in this framework, given the utility functions, how do we define it? Well, simple. A strategy MI, all right, is a dominant strategy. Remember, a mechanism uh, is going to be a machinery, right? This is the mechanism with the strategy space an outcome function. We stuff some inputs. I said these are uh, private info. And then we get some outputs. We want those outputs to be, you know, efficient, fair, whatever the criteria you have. So here, the inputs are what? Well, the inputs are private information, which is like the preferences, theta of player one, theta of player two, theta n. So these are the agent's true preferences, which are private information. So given the private information, all right, well then this mechanism is actually going to be a game, right? And game is such that the players are, you know, set of N, uh, the action or strategies is capital M, and the payoff function, not the payoff function, the uh, uh, outcome function is G, and then the payoffs are given by those. Uh, you know, the V uh, plus G, which is the utility function U, all right? So in this game, uh, we are actually trying to find what strategies, what messages form, a, you know, a, an equilibrium in the sense of dominant strategies. So a strategy MI is a dominant strategy, uh, given that uh, strategy MI of individual I or player I is a dominant strategy at theta i, meaning when his true preferences is theta i, when his true preferences is some other theta i prime, well, obviously dominant strategy can be different, all right? So mi is a dominant strategy, conditional on his true type is theta i. Well, when, if, and only if, remember all definitions are if and only if statement, this is, uh, I know it looks ugly, this is the utility of player i, all right, given that he declares his, his strategy is mi, his opponent's strategy is m minus i, and his type is theta i. That's it. The utility depends on those things. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Uh, also, the, uh, the, uh, the, pay, the outcome function, g, obviously. Well, what about this? This is, well, let me erase this picture here. This is also the utility function of the same individual, all right? Well, the only difference is that we change the player eyes or the individual eyes utility, um, I'm sorry, strategy, but we keep everything else the same, all right? So, once again, strategy MI is a dominant strategy at the preference profile, at the preference 
uh, or the, at the, at the, for the type theta i if uh, the utility of playing that strategy is going to be greater than or equal to utility of playing any other strategy for all mi, regardless of what the other guys do. All right, so the utility of playing mi is greater than utility of mi prime for every mi prime. So whatever strategy you have, mi is going to give you the highest payoff. But the thing is, that's regardless, that's true, regardless of m minus i, meaning whatever your opponents do, playing mi is going to give you the highest utility. Okay, uh, that's, that's the definition of dominant strategy. Well, now, probably the most important definition in this chapter. A social choice function, remember the social choice function, which has two components, the decision rule and the transfer function. Again, if the utilities are not transferable, we can in, 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 uh, ignore the transfer function. It's the social choice function is nothing but the decision rule. But in, in environments like auction, we also have a transfer function. So a social choice function f is implemented in dominant strategies by the mechanism mg if and only if, that's a definition, there exist functions, strategies for each player. So this is strategy of player i, mi, a strategy. Remember, this is a simultaneous move game. So a mechanism is a simultaneous move game. All right. Um, you may wonder, I mean, why can't I create a mechanism where players are actually playing a sequential move game? You can. But the thing is, mechanism is the normal form representation of this game. Okay, so a strategy which types uh, each um, 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 each type uh, of the player into a message space mi such that mi theta i remember mi is a function and its input is uh, type theta i mi theta i is a dominant strategy for each player i and for each type theta i and this is the first thing so this there's going to be a a dominant strategy for each player i uh, all right and then the second thing is that g of m theta is going to be f theta, meaning the social choice function at preference profile theta, theta is the true type profile, all right? And m theta is the, 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 the message at true types, all right? So the, the strategy profile at true types, this is what m theta is. g of m theta is the outcome when players play strategy profile m theta. And again, m theta is the strategy profile when the true type profile is theta, all right? So the outcome function is going to give us the same outcome as the social choice function at any uh, type profile, okay? I know this is a complicated the definition, probably the most complicated definition in this entire course. But I really want you to spend, uh, you know, at least a few minutes, if not a few hours, to kind of understand every single wording of this definition. Uh, well, in order to help you to understand it, let me go back to the example I gave you. Remember, there were two uh, uh, sort of individuals, Alice, Bob, and there was energy authority who wanted to build a, a power plant. And so the, the mechanism that the mechanism designer came up with was, uh, where should I put it? Let's, let's put it somewhere, somewhere here because we already know what dominant strategy is. So the mechanism designer or the, the mechanism we talked about was the following, if you remember, it was a simultaneous move game, right? Alice is the role player and, and Bob, right? Bob was the column player and the strategies were up and down, all right? So this is what MI is, uh, up and down, where I is either Bob 
or Alice, doesn't matter. They both have the same message space. Um, what else? Uh, remember, we had the oil, we had the uh, nuclear power plant, and then we had gas here and then coal here. All right, so this is the mechanism, all right? Once again, the message space is UD, okay? What else? Um, the G function is the following. Uh, remember, G is a function which maps each uh, message profile into an outcome, uh, D. Uh, I'm sorry, here D, D is... Uh, you know, uh, how should I say it? Uh, up and down, this is the name of the strategy, so maybe I should use a different name. Uh, well, let's call it outcome, okay? So you know what I mean. For example, here the G is simple, right? If up, up is the strategy profile, outcome is oil power plant. Uh, if up, down is the strategy profile, well then coal is the outcome. If DU is the strategy profile, well then nuclear power plant is the outcome, and then finally G of uh, DD is gas. All right, so this is the outcome function. All right, so together with this M and this G, this is the mechanism. Huh. Okay, well, what about implementation and the social choice function, remember? Okay, also let me talk about that. So if you remember, I said there are two, two states of the world, state one and then state two. In state one, Alice and Bob has preferences. I'm not going to write them because I don't think I will need them. Alice, Bob, again, they have preferences. And if you remember, I said Again, if you don't remember, please go back to the to that episode where I uh, talk about this example extensively. So I said, in this case, if state one is the true state, and if the authority, the uh, the the municipality knows this true state, the best outcome uh, well, is is oil because if you remember, oil was the. Uh, you know, each player, each Bob and Alice needed to make a concession and oil, you know, seemed like the best outcome. And uh, in state two, uh, the gas was the gas power plant seemed like the uh, best outcome. If you remember, we said that. Well, that is the uh, sort of um, uh, uh, social choice function. So here, the social choice function is the following. Well, first of all, remember the social choice function maps each type to, oh, well, the social choice function maps each type to, uh, this is a, a capital, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> So this is the type profile, a space of type profile to, again, outcome. D, the set of uh, uh, decisions. So oh, yeah, the D, the set of decisions. So in that environment, in this environment, the social choice function that we wanted to implement is the following one. F uh, theta is theta one or state one. State one. Well, then oil power plant. When theta is state two, well, then gas power plant. Okay, that was the, uh, uh, that is the social choice function. We said this mechanism is going to implement. All right. Uh, well, so the thing is, uh, again, if you, if, if, if you need to clear the details, well, you, you should remember in this um, mechanism design environment, the players are clearly Bob and Alice, right? And then the, 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 the set of decisions, um, social decisions, are simple, oil power plant, gas power plant, coal power plant, and neutral, oh, neutral, I'm sorry, 
um, nuclear nuclear power plant. Okay. Uh, what else? We didn't have T. All right. So you can assume T is equal to zero. Uh, so there's going to be no transfer because the preferences, we don't have transferable utility environment here. There's no price. And so you cannot make a money transfer from one individual to another individual. So no transfer. These are the outcomes. Uh, decision rules, I'm sorry. Um, so, and, and this is, oh, what about the types? Well, the types uh, is, is, is simple. So uh, this capital, the set of types has two states, state one and state two. Here, important thing is player and Alice and Bob already have a common information. They both know the state, all right? There is no informational asymmetry between Alice and Bob. The informational asymmetry is between the participants, Bob and Alice, and the energy authority, which is not a player in this mechanism, all right? So therefore, the private information is what the true state is, all right? Um, and so state one or state two, these are the types, okay? Well, therefore, given the types, the social choice function we wanted to implement was this. And if you remember, the first mechanism we talked about was, what if we just ask them? Ask them what the true state is. So I said, let's call, and the message space is state one, state two, all right? And so they play a game, each, each player uh, declares a state, and then uh, if they both agree on the state, well, then we are going to, for example, if they both say it is state one, well, then we're going to, I mean, the, the, then it is state one. And so we're going to provide oil power plant. If they both say state two, we're going to say gas is going to. Uh, uh, so I should, I should be more careful about that. In this method, oh, Maybe before I go this, let me first talk about this mechanism, all right? So this mechanism, if you remember, we said implements this social choice function. However, here, so this is a game and we found the Nash equilibrium, remember? And in this Nash equilibrium, uh, the outcome is the following. When state one is the true state, the outcome, the Nash equilibrium outcome was UU. When the true state is state two, the outcome was DD, all right? So therefore, for every theta, G of M theta is equal to F of theta. All right, so theta is the true state. If theta is equal to state one, M of theta is what? M of theta is, so this is M of theta uh, equal state one, and this is M of theta equals, theta equals state two. So when theta, the true state is state one, M of theta is U, 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 and the G function is oil, which is also the case. And when uh, theta is state two, the true state is state two, M of theta is DD, and in case of DD, we generated a gas power plant, which is also the same for uh, uh, the social choice function F. Well, you may wonder, what if those outcomes, we don't care, okay? Because the social choice function uh, does not operate in these instances. Uh, you see what I mean? Because again, uh, so, nevertheless, G of M theta is equal to F of theta for every theta. So, G implements F, but the thing is, it is not implementing, G is not implementing F in dominant strategies. How do I know that? Well, if you check in state one, UU is in Nash equilibrium because you, Nash equilibrium outcome, but U is not a dominant strategy. Here, by the way, we're not talking about weak dominance. We talk about strict dominance or simply just dominance. So U is not a dominant strategy. Uh, the reason is uh, when, uh, if, if you look at Alice's preferences, I didn't write it, uh, so apparently I needed it. Uh, so 
In state one, Alice's preferences are gas, oil, coal, and nuclear. And in state two, nuclear, gas, coal, and oil. Okay? So please don't confuse with N, with the set of players G, okay? So uh, when oh, oh, Alice compares oil with nuclear, in state one, oil is better than nuclear, okay? But what about coal versus gas? Coal is not better than gas, all right? So that means U is a better action, better strategy than D, only if Bob plays U. Remember, the dominant strategy says whatever Bob plays, U should be a better strategy than D. But this is not the case. So U does not dominate D. Similarly, you can check D does not dominate U. So therefore, uh, this is not a dominant. So I mean, U, U, oh, I'm sorry, M, um, how should I say it? G does not implement F in dominant strategies. However, it does implement it in Nash strategies, okay, or Bayesian Nash strategies. There's no expectation here, but, you know, Nash equilibrium and Bayesian Nash equilibrium are the same thing when there's no incomplete information among the players or there's, if there's no asymmetric information among the players. So, once again, G implements F, not in dominant strategies, but in uh, a Nash equilibrium. Uh, so, okay, so... This is, uh, in the next episode, I'm going to describe it more formally, but what we call indirect mechanism. And in fact, well, why we call it indirect mechanism? Well, because we do not directly ask a players uh, the true state, the, you know, the, the, the relevant information. Instead, we just tell them do some weird things like up or down, right? They just indirectly associate each strategy to the true uh, state of the world. But the thing is, we don't really ask them the true state. Well, the question is, uh, what if we just ask them the true state? Exactly the same framework, but instead of telling them to choose up or down, well, let them choose, you know, the, or the, the strategies are about the true state. Can't we do that? So we call them direct mechanism. We can. So let's consider now another mechanism where M, the set of messages or strategies, is state one and state two. And so what is the outcome function, the second ingredient of a mechanism? Well, it's going to be given by this matrix. Again, whenever they both say uh, S1, state one, uh, we're going to build the oil power plant, same. Whenever they both state state two, uh, we're going to build the gas power plant. And whenever Alice declares state one, but Bob declares uh, state, uh, 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 state two, well, then we're going to uh, produce uh, coal or uh, build coal over um, um, power plant and here nuclear power plant. Okay, meaning exactly the same outcome function. All right, so this is the G in a sense. Uh, the message space is not about up down, it's about the true state. Well, so the question is can I say this G, all right, let's call it G prime, G prime. M of theta is equal to F of theta for every theta. Oh, yes, exactly. So that means this mechanism also implements this social choice function. Well, then the question is, if I can hold my ear this way with my right, so my, if, I'm, if I'm able to hold my right ear with my right hand, why am I uh, basically holding my right uh, ear with my left hand? It's like, Indirect. I mean, this is what I mean. It's like why we do this indirect approach. Well, depending on application, sometimes indirect mechanisms are more natural, like the auction. We don't ask people, tell us your valuation. We, we ask them, what is your bid? How much are you willing to pay? Right? So it's pretty natural in this environment. But in many other environments, for example, in voting, it's like instead of asking them which candidate they would like to vote for, um, asking like, 
you know, if you, if you, well, I mean, it's, you know, jump up, jump down, uh, you know, roll over, whatever, these kind of weird uh, strategies. It's like, is it reasonable? No, not that in, uh, not that in, in, in that environment. Okay, so the bottom line is that for any mechanism, all right, for any indirect mechanism, if it implements a social choice function in dominant strategy, well, in this example, it wasn't dominant strategy, okay, well, fine, but if, if there is an indirect mechanism which implementing a, me a social choice function in dominant strategy, you know what, we can actually find a direct mechanism which will also implement the same social choice function in dominant strategies. So we don't really need to worry about all these indirect approaches. So this is what the next theorem and result we're going to talk about.